On the 23rd of June 1980, Sanjay Gandhi took off from the Delhi Flying Club in a two-seater plane at 7.58 a.m. At 8.20, his mother, Indira Gandhi, was informed that Sanjay's plane had crashed. A few minutes later, she was at the site of the crash, not far from the Prime Minister's residence. Sanjay had been killed and he was just 33. He left behind a young wife, a three-month-old son and a devastated mother who was then India's Prime Minister. Along with Sanjay, the club's flight instructor Subhash Saxena also died in the crash. Saxena was reluctant to fly with him that fateful morning because he knew that the Prime Minister's son lacked the experience to fly the new Pitts S2A plane. A month before the fatal crash, Air Marshal J. Zahir, the Director General of Civil Aviation, had expressed concerns that Sanjay was violating safety regulations. The Air Marshal had to pay the price with his job for drawing attention to Sanjay's flying stunts. Nobody dared cross Sanjay's path. He was a law unto himself. Sanjay Gandhi had emerged as an extra constitutional authority during the emergency. After the return of Indira Gandhi as Prime Minister in January 1980, Sanjay reset himself as an alternative centre of power. Of the 351 Congress MPs elected to the Lok Sabha, more than 150 were Sanjay loyalists. He himself won the election from Amethi in Uttar Pradesh. His clout in the party and the government increased. Sanjay was making and unmaking chief ministers and ministers and getting officials loyal to him appointed in key positions. His role as a successor to his mother was accepted unquestionably within the Congress and the government. All this was because everybody knew that Sanjay was Indira Gandhi's political heir. She believed he had the making of a successful politician. He's not a thinker, he's a doer, she told her friends. And that he was, most often, courting controversy. It started with a people's car. Sanjay was always fascinated with cars and fond of tinkering with engines. Indira Gandhi got him a three-year apprenticeship at Rolls-Royce London to learn automobile technology in 1966. He dropped out after nine months and after returning home set up a shop in a garage in Delhi to work on a prototype. In 1971, the government approved his proposal for the production of his dream car. The Maruti Limited Company was incorporated with Sanjay Gandhi as its managing director. The swiftness with which the project was sanctioned without the necessary finances, requisite industry experience and bypassing the rules raised a storm in Parliament. The opposition accused Indira of promoting her son and dynasty in politics, a charge made very strongly for the first time. Pliable politicians competed with each other to favour Indira Gandhi's son. The foremost among them was the Haryana Chief Minister Bansi Lal. He sanctioned 300 acres of land for the Maruti factory in Gurgaon on the Haryana-Delhi border. By 1975, Sanjay had lost interest in the project and got involved in politics as a dependable ally of his mother. He was accused of being an extra-constitutional authority during the emergency as he held no position in the government or the Congress party but took important decisions on behalf of Indira. In fact, he became the face of the excesses that happened during this dark period. In 1980, just months before his death, Sanjay was calling the shots. Sanjay's death marked a turning point because it brought to the fore Indira Gandhi's other son, the pilot and reluctant politician Rajiv Gandhi, who was pushed into the fray as Prime Minister after her own death in 1984. But Sanjay did leave behind a mark. He brought in a generation of his confidants who went on to become senior leaders within the Congress. Kamal Nath, Sanjay's friend from Dune School, Jagdish Taitla and Ambika Soni 
were members of the Youth Congress and his stormtroopers. His people's car, Maruti, which rolled out its first car in 1983, became a sensation. It is still the most successful automobile company in India. But Sanjay Gandhi is clearly most remembered for the period of the emergency and his role in the excesses that went with it.